Okay, so what we're going to do in today's session, uh, for those of you who were here last week, what I was doing, I was looking at the uh, BBC Good Food data set. So um, this is a data set that I and my colleague uh, Mark Needham imported sometime last year. Uh, so this is recipes, uh, authors of the recipes, um, the ingredients and so forth, and just exploring it. And, and one of the things that I was looking at was uh, what kind of entity resolution we could do in that. And so last week it was very much around sort of trying to resolve ingredients. So what would be, um, which which uh, recipes, sorry, which rich recipes would, you know, could be classed as the same based on the ingredients. And we were looking at the graph data science libraries there. So I was having a play with some of those. So I was looking at weekly connected components. So I was looking at uh, a quick run with Levain. We had some fun trying to get the, the graph up into memory. And what I was quite keen to do today was I'd like to keep looking at that because we discovered a lot of interesting things uh, and I've gone and had a think. So for example, uh, with uh, weekly connected components, we probably want to rerun that where not only do we get rid of common ingredients, so things like olive oil or salt or that kind of thing where they're probably going to be most recipes anyway, we probably want to get rid of the rare ingredients as well because we're not interested in those. So, you know, if, if, if an ingredient only features in, in one recipe out of the, I think it was something like, I think we've got like 120,000 recipes and like that, then not really of interest. So we could probably safely ignore those as well. But the main thing I was really keen today, uh, really keen to do today, was uh, one of the hiccups or, or one of the things that didn't make the experience as smooth. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> One of the things that didn't make that experience as smooth was we did this good work about finding the duplicate. So things like cherry tomato, cherry tomatoes, flaked almond, almond flakes, etc, etc. But we never actually did anything with, with those discoveries. So we've gone away and done that good work about finding them, uh, but we just left them. And what I'm really keen to do to kick off today would be to go away and let's just deal with those. So I want to effectively go through that, um, pick, pick, pick an ingredient, any ingredient, and then turn that one as our, you know, as our resolved ingredient. So this, you know, this, so, you know, you may view this as entity resolution, you may view this as deduplication. So we, we've got some rules and the rules that we've, pl we've put in there are uh, plurals, we treat as the same ingredient, uh, ordering, as long as the same words are there, we treat it as the same ingredient. And then what you'll see as well, we've got some examples with, for example, uh, a chicken's a great example. We've got things like uh, sort of uh, chicken breast fillets, and then maybe we've got skinless chicken breast fillets. And we might argue that actually we want to treat those as the same. So for the purposes of its purposes of a recipe maybe we just say you know what that's the same thing so we want to do all of that and roll that down and that gives us a couple of uh, options here so one is we resolve down some of the ingredients so we're just going to have fewer ingredients to be working with when we're processing and it also gives us some interesting things to think about with regards to how we can fit these into hierarchies. So that's the first thing I'm going to get done today. So that's that's going to be my primary focus. And hopefully if we've got a bit of time, so it might be a shorter session today. If we've got a bit of time, uh, let's let's have a look at um, working again with the with the graph algorithms we're looking at. So maybe we can have another go at weekly connected components or something again. So one, we've resolved the ingredients down. And two, we're just going to ignore the, the ingredients that, you know, we ever only ever use like once, like, I, I don't know, birthday candles might be one. All right, let's get cracking. So I've got my database here. I've started it. So let's bring up browser. And one of the things I'm going to do first is I want to clean out some of the stuff. So I've been a bit messy. There's sort of a decaying disaster going on in the database. So we probably want to get rid of that. So let's remind ourselves of what the scheme looks like. <clears throat> and what we probably want to get rid of. So, okay, so this this here, this was the... Um, so what I like to do when I am doing the community detection, I quite like to create a, a separate node. And each node has the ID of the community. And then I connect connect the item in question to the community. So I've got one here that was our weekly connected components uh, communities that we had. Uh, I think entity two, this was when we tried running Louvain against 
the ingredient, sorry, the recipes to try and group them together. And I think we may have another one lurking here, which was, unless I've already removed it. Um, uh, we may have had a, I know we may have removed it, but I had one where I was using uh, Levain Community Detection to link ingredients together. So that was from the original post. So I'm just going to have a quick peek what temp is. Is this the, ah yes, temp was the label that we added um, to uh, just to describe which ingredients we wanted to bring in when we were doing the graph projections. So we'll probably get rid of that label as well. So I'm just going to do a bit of clean up first to get rid of these. So let's do that. Okay. Oh, okay. It's just probably we've got an in, uh, we've got an index set for that, which is probably why it's showing. Fine. We can ignore that. Let's get rid of entity two. And what else did we want to get rid of? Temp. Let's get rid of this label. So let's do a bit of clean up for that as well. Uh, do, 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 do. We want to do. Uh, I do. I think we just do remo oh, remove. Remove even. Uh, let's just remind ourselves how to uh, just remind myself how to do this do, 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 do. Oh, okay yeah it's just that cool right okay so it's interesting that we only had uh, 371 ingredients that we're actually uh, doing the projection for. But obviously the expensive bit there, it's not the ingredients, it's all the relationships between the ingredients and the recipes. Okay, so we've done that. And if we just redo this, this will probably, yeah, there's a nice cleaned up. So we're kind of originally there. So the only difference here is you see this similar to relationship. So this was the the work that I did previously to try and do the entity resolution, uh, entity resolution and group these things together. So just going to remind myself of, oops. So I'm just going to drag this up because what I want to do is I want to reuse some of the queries that I've put in here. And we had a query in here where I grouped together, so that was from the cleaning. And okay, so what we want to do, probably want to try and group all of the ingredients that are similar to. So let's see what that looks like. So let's do something like match. Hmm, how are we going to do this? All right, this is probably going to bring back like the repeat, um, repeat ingredients. Can I have a think about how we can do this? But if we do something like I ingredients similar to I2 ingredients, and uh, this is a bit hacky, but it, it reduces some of the repeated um, repeated results that we're going to get back. Not all of them, but it will, it will reduce some of the things that come back. So let's do where ID I is less than ID I2. Oops, no, I didn't want to do that. I pressed the wrong key combination. Return dot name collect I2 dot name. So hopefully that will roughly we'll get a rough grouping of similar ingredients. So we'll, we'll get some repeating things because what you'll what you'll find is so things like you probably get vegetable stock cube B for vegetable stock. So these are the things that have been grouped together. Let's flip down one's a good one. So let's try and sort these by 
size. The uh, ones with big collections. There we go. So you're getting up. So this is what I was talking about, where we'll remove some, but not all of them. So I need to have a little think about. Not lots to worry now. We can. That's something we can have a play with. Um, but you, you can see an example here where we're kind of cycling through. So I've just reduced slightly what comes back, but you will find that we'll get a bit of duplication going. But that's okay. That's. That's fine. Uh, it allows us to see what's going on. So you can see an example here. So this is where I was talking about, depending on where do you want to draw the line, and this is going to be, be against um, what threshold, for example, you set when you run the node similarity algorithm as to how specific do you want it to be. So you can see here uh, what's happening. So effectively what node similarity does is it's, it's going to go away and just have a look at the the intersection of common nodes and obviously the threshold that you set will say like you know how how you know how, to what degree of uh, matching do you want the intersection to be so you can see here for example with soft light brown sugar you've got soft brown sugar well okay that's you know that's probably going to be the same then we've got light brown sugar um you can see we're kind of missing words or a word slightly different so if you cast your mind minds back what we did previously is we tokenized each ingredient so if you've got here light brown muscovado sugar that would have four nodes coming off it the ingredient name where it have light brown muscovado and sugar ah, so that's what's going on and then what we ran node similarity against those ingredient um we 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 ran similarity against the ingredient names between ingredients so we've got some groupings here so this is this is good stuff and probably what would be nice to do now. And I'm going to make that assumption that, and some of these might be wrong, but that's okay. Um, but what you'll see, for example, with things like, uh, like curry paste, like, you know, obviously a Thai curry paste and a Madras curry paste are very different things indeed. But maybe for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to say, well, actually, let's let's call these the same. I mean, what we can do, and we can have a play later because I will create a new set of nodes to reflect this. But maybe what we'll say is we will treat whichever one of these gets hit first. Uh, so, because obviously these aren't, you can see these are not in order. And you'll see this thing where you have these sort of diminishing returns where each one will come back and there'll be fewer items. But let's let's make the assumption here that whichever one we hit we'll say yep that's the that is the real entity oh excuse me that'll be the real entity and then from there what we'll say is you know we'll, we'll link it to that key one and then we we can always then trace back and see what the origin, original original ingredient was but we'll, we'll add whichever is the first one that we hit we'll say yep that's that's the real one all the rest of pretenders and let's run with that and then that at least will cut down the number of things that we have. All right, so let's let's have a go at that. So I'm just going to quickly grab a copy of this, and I'm going to have a little think about how could we rewrite this query. So, for example, when we when we get this, this is the only one that ever comes for this collection. So I need to have a little think about what that might look like. But that's probably that that'll be sort of some offline time having a think about that. So I'm just going to quickly grab a copy of that so I know to. I need to go explore that later. Okay, so we can what we could probably say is let's call this the the new ingredient, and there's probably going to be a pretty way of doing this. I'm probably going to do this the um, uh, probably a clunky approach, but where my thinking is is let's just pick the 
first ingredient that we hit we'll um, we'll create a new um, node for that with that ingredient name uh, so we're going to first check to see if it you know if something doesn't exist then we go off and create a new ingredient name if it does already exist then we just sort of just do all the, the various linking so let's see how that's going to look so let's create a new um, item here so let's do create index on uh, new ingredient let's call it new ingredient so we know it's a new name and right okay so we've got this so let's have a think about how we might go about doing this let's say actually let's let's sketch let's sketch something out in arrows let's see what we think this might look like so That moment we've got we've got ingredient and ingredient uh we've got recipe has ingredient so let's do this something like this isn't it probably not the exact relationship types can't remember offhand but we've got this let me just pin this And then we say that an ingredient is similar to another ingredient. So an ingredient is similar to another ingredient and what we want to do is we want to say well actually so whichever one of these two that we hit we're going to say arbitrarily and then we can sort of figure out what this looks like better but let's say we're going to say new ingredient and these are both going to be the same new ingredient so let's we'll talk through what goes on we can think of a better name for the types, but for now, just say what's going on. So, and this will be has a new ingredient. So, what we want to do is we've got these two ingredients here. So, let's say this is cherry tomato. Let's say this is cherry tomatoes. So we're dealing with the plural there. It's making it a bit different. So what I'm going to do is whichever one of these two I hit first, I'm going to do a query and it's going to be something like, um, you know, match ingredient. And then we can check to see has it got a becomes, uh, we, we, we pick that one and we go through and check all of the ingredients that it's similar to, do they have a becomes relationship coming off it? If it doesn't, so if this so if none of the uh, ingredients that we grab, so we'll grab this one, we first go, okay, do you have a becomes relationship coming off you? No. Right, let's check through all of the nodes that you're connected to with similar to, do any of you have a, a, a becomes relationship coming off you? If you do, so let's say for example here, uh, let's say for example here this one doesn't exist so let's say we've got to this one this one doesn't have a becomes relationship but we have a look and say this one does have becomes relationship then what we're going to do is we're going to go see what is the ingredient that this the new ingredient that this ingredient has becomes relationship to and then we're going to create that same relationship between the ingredient and the new ingredient and then what we'll need to do in this scenario is um we, we go through it we'll traverse the has ingredient and in, in every recipe that has that as an ingredient we're going to create this has an ingredient uh, relationship with new ingredient so 
we're effectively we're going to reduce we're effectively going to reconnect or we're going to add an extra relationship between relationship and new ingredient so that we know what that relation uh, what that recipe is referring to and we add these now if we pick this ingredient and it turns out there is no uh, becomes a relationship across any of the nodes that it has a similar to relationship with and then we'll then we'll say hey this is this is the um this is what the ingredient all of them should be so again this is we're just arbitrarily just picking the first one that we hit in our query and then we connect it with the comes relationship so let's have a go at building that out okay oops let's bring up uh, this so let's let's bring this up because we this is the thing that we care about um, I don't think this really matters to any extent so this is probably going to be a bit of a slow query but what we'll try and do as well is let's do all the let's do all of the all of the so what we can do uh, and this is probably not very efficient but if we do order them by count whereas we've got here if we go back to here then we know we're going to catch this one first so we want to catch this one first and this is going to be the first ingredient that was this this will have the lowest id out of all of those so what we can do we catch we catch this one first and then this one is going to become the new ingredient so we'll have the new ingredient name for this and we attach it and then all of these what we can do is we can add that uh, has new ingredient relationship and then what we can do then hopefully we're going to then skip these ones because uh, all of these will already have that that relationship and then we could then hopefully that should yeah i reckon that'll work let's let's give that a go so we're doing our bit to find our relationship and this is probably not going to be the fastest but that's okay well it's reasonably fast we run that query so that's fine so let's just um, have a think about how we're going to do this and not i what did, what did we say we we're going to call this um becomes okay that's fine we know it doesn't exist yet so find the ingredient where it doesn't have that that's up by high and then we're going to do uh, uh, let's see what happens we're going to do is we don't need the name anymore so we're just going to collect items collection and then we will unwind that
I have a feeling this is going to not give us the expected result, but it's all good. So I think what we'll do, we'll do a second pass. We're going to um, re-tag the recipes with the new ingredient. But for now, let's let's just focus on trying to group these all into new ingredient and see what happens. Oh, that should be becomes. All right, let's see what happens. It, it might explode. Oh, that's that's a really small window, isn't it? Anyway, okay, let's let's see what happens. That was surprisingly fast, but it's made seven hundred and twenty-one nodes which is slightly concerning because it says here we had 722 records and here it's made 721 which would seem to which would lead me to suggest that we're probably going to find that we've got some of the uh, ingredients going on so we might need to have to we might have to do these one by one so that's okay we can work around that but let's let's have a look what's happened but i think what's happened is all of those sugars are examples that we've probably got a bunch of sugars with new ingredient that's okay. Let's have a look at. Let's see what it looks like. So let's expand this one out. Okay. So let's do the. Oh, okay. No, that's interesting. Yeah. So we think that's probably what's happening. So you see, we've got more than one. It becomes a relationship. So maybe we might need to. We need to have a look. So that would would lead lead me to believe that we've probably got more than one new ingredient coming off. So that's an easy one to easy one to answer. So if we do something like ingredients, Return, oh no, five limit. Oops, return, start limit, uh, five. And I suspect what's happened is we've got some ingredients plump. Yeah, there we go. So, what's happened here is it's kind of linked. So, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to drop all of those. So, we're going to detach, delete new ingredient and then let's let's sort of do this um one at a time and see what happens okay Let's think about how we can do this. Let's go back to the original query. I grab a copy of that. Ah, okay, so Just probably not going to work, but let's see what happens if it's probably not going to work, but let's see what happens. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's the same thing again with create the same numbers. That's wrong. I mean, like, I would probably have guessed we should be getting a lot less than that. So perhaps what isn't a bad idea is if we spend some time on this initial query and see is there a way how we can force it to only return that collection once then if we figure this one out then the create bit should be the create bit should hopefully work okay so actually i'm just gonna have a quick look so i'm wondering whether i faced this previously when trying to sort something so i'm just gonna quick peek so i have a distant memory that i was trying to do this previously when i was grouping things together so let's just have a look So this is all of the tokenizing work. Oh. So I think it, so let's have a quick peek at this because I think this might have been the query that let's have a quick peek. Yes, so I think this is the this is the one that stopped bringing garlic and ginger paste. So I think if we don't see garlic and ginger paste here, then that may have been the one. So. Have a look in that case. Uh, then we just adapt. Oh, order by. There you go. Sorry. Okay, so let's have a quick look at garlic. So, garlic, we know we may have multiple attend to that. So, yeah, so we've got the two. Granny Smith apple thing. So maybe this query doesn't quite do what we were hoping it was going to do. Interestingly, they're not quite ordering in the order I was expecting, so that's fun. Yeah, so it's not it's not doing what I was hoping it was going to do, unfortunately. That's dashed my hopes slightly. Well, that's a shame. So I'm wondering, can we do something where we maybe want to do some kind of comparison so maybe I'm just trying to think because we can do the ordering thing and if we could do like some kind of a size comparator so if we call back the same collection and say well we want the same we want the same collection uh, with that name. So as in, so let me sort of talk through. So let's say we've got, um, and these are in ID order. We've got almond flakes, flaked almond, uh, flaked almonds, just as an example. And what's happening at the moment is if we want to get all of those together, we're getting almond flakes is the same as flaked almond and flaked almonds. 
and then it will, and then in the ID option will be flaked almond is the same as flaked almond. So it, sk it skips that because it still fits that ID rule. And what I'm sitting here wondering is, can we do the one where ID is less than ID2? And we want to some way pull all of the members that have that similar to uh, relationship. So if you did uh, almond flakes, flaked almond, uh, flaked almonds, because there's, there's three of them in total, or say two two members in total in this example, as in th that it's similar to, that would bring back a two, so that's okay. But if we did like the converse and said, well, uh, you've got flaked almond and flaked almonds, but actually how many uh, similar to relationships are coming off flaked almond? Well, there's two, but it's only one coming back. Then we reject that and say, well, you know, you've felt that. So let's have a think about how we could do that. sounds overly complicated must be there must be a nice way of doing this so this should be this would be a fun one very satisfying to to figure out I'm just wondering, well, can we do another approach where we just grab the first ingredient, then treat that as the master one, and then anything that comes back, then we yeah, let's let's see what happens. Let's let's try that. It, it might not work, but let's see what happens. I'm going to bring back this code and just change it slightly. So, how about we just say So I think the problem here is, I need to check this, but I think what it's doing is it will grab everything into memory and you know when everything's pulled in, everything matches that condition where you haven't got that. So it's not going to post check for each thing that you do. So we almost want to do this one by one. And I'm wondering whether we use maybe, um, so APOC you've got periodic, I can always forget if it's periodic iterate, the periodic iterate one, so maybe if we set it to one, so we want it to, hmm, Something like this. This feels like it's unnecessary. That seems crazy. I'd love to do that. I was thinking of a very bucket boomerang grant and next ingredient, but that seems complicated. Actually, no, let's no, let's go for this. 
And maybe I should double check not in the cipher reference card as well in case I'm messing something up. I've just realised something. Am I making a... I'm making the assumption here. I've just realised this. That the ingredient I is... This is always going to have a lower I... No, is that right? Hang on, let, let's just try something quickly. I just want to... I want to bring back this original query. I'm just curious about something. Something that's just dawned on me is we're specifying a direction here between ingredient and other ingredient although that shouldn't make a difference but i'm just wondering whether this might be doing weird things so i'm just just out of interest i'm just going to get rid of that and, and see what comes back do we just end up with a slower query but the same number of things come back ah so do we have duplication of stuff going on here yeah, so we just duplicated things. Okay, that's fine. So now no, we keep the direction in there. So that's that's cool. That's okay, right? So back back to the drawing board. Um, Let's have a think about this. By all means, if, if you've got any suggestions there in the chat, do fire them in. Ah, uh, let's have a think, let's have a think. Hmm. Ah, well, let's just quickly check the cipher rep card just in case. And look for not. So it's boolean, so it's not like we have to wrap it in parameters. Okay. So. Hmm. <laughs> It's one of those things where you sort of think, ah, this is relatively straightforward to do, but it uh, seems, <laughs> appears to be a bit more uh, involved than I originally thought. Let's have a quick look at that intersection query again, just, just in case. Let's have a look through what exactly is going on. Is there something we can do to adjust it slightly? So... I 
okay so i think that's what the, i think this is what this is trying to do so it's But it does miss some things. So let's just add some numbers to what's going on. So we've got with Actually, I've just I've just had a thought. I've just had a thought and I wonder if this is going to work. What if I go back to this original query and I've just thought if we get rid of the direction for this and what I'm gonna say is I want to find the first node in the group that doesn't have uh, an inbound similar to relationship. Okay, so let's let's try that. So we're not. I'm going to say, I. So let's say I want to. I'm going to say that the the one with the. Is that true? This might not be true. I think they've got two way. Let's just quickly check this because I suspect. Oops. I know maybe no maybe this yeah no because I think there's there's a two bound similar to relationship so let's just quickly check that I'm gonna if I bring back a ingredient bring up let's just bring up any ingredient it doesn't matter um ingredients definitely not picking olive oil because we know that's just asking for trouble uh let's go baking powder i can't imagine there's a huge number of recipes associated with baking powder although it might not be similar to anything either oh famous last words uh, let's that was a terrible choice okay let's go let's go back to writing the query actually you know what i'm going to use bloom for this This would be much quicker to do in Bloom, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it up in Bloom. We know there's um, is it light brown sugar?
other thing we've got double-sided oh no okay no that's good news okay so actually what we can do then so if i go to let's check is this got any similar to ah uh, yeah 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 we've got the we've got both directions so do we have any double uh, okay let's let's have a look at this 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 might be oh. we might actually get away with this so i don't think so let's expand And let's expand the other direction as well. Oh no, we've got them. We have the dreaded double headed similar to. Okay, so that one's put that one out of the that one's out of the drawing board. There was my 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 hope to do a a way to pick the lowest one, so let's think how we can do this. Oh this is a this is a fun one to solve. Hmm. What about oh, bring this back up? I don't know this is this is this is a real riddler I mean what I could do to cheat would be to do the so I did it before, I used the um, Louvain algorithm to assign them to each to a community and then from the community I could use that node, stick an ingredient name, just pick an ingredient name uh, arbitrarily so I can just, from that point I can just pick, um, just pick the first first node or I don't care if it runs through it because it's just gonna it will eventually stick on the name and then link that to the original ingredient but that feels a bit cheating I, I feel like there is a way to to solve this I just can't think offhand what it might be so for the purposes of just completion and getting something done I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to go away and have a think about how we can do that so let's let's do it that way so I, I feel like I, f I feel like that we've at least managed to map an ingredient to the duplicate ingredient. So I'm just going to copy the code that I've got for Delevain. So I need to do the graph projection. So I'm going to do that. Oops, I don't need bloom anymore. We get rid of bloom. We answered our question. And let's get the other half of that query, which is this.
Oh dear, that is a... Uh... Actually, no, 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 we're expecting a lot of notes, so that makes sense, because we've got lots of ingredients that have only got, like, what? That they're only using, um, that, you know, that, that aren't duplicated, so that's fine. So if we do, um, we called it, um, what did we call the node? We called it, oh, entity, okay, so if we do, let's just, Job, I think so. Oh, what did we? Community. So we've got entity contains. Okay. Contains member. Okay, so let's do that then. So, oh dear. Houses, all the flower. Okay, so well, I think this is also joined in some more bits and pieces, but that's fine, you know, for the purposes of let's get this done. So we talked about we've got quite a few. Yeah, like single ingredient things. So let's do this. Let's all right. Let's let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pick one. I'm going to try and pick uh, one at random for each collection and just add it to the name. So let's go with. That's exciting, that repeats twice. We'll have to look into why that is at some point. Alright, so let's let's do that. So we're gonna take that and I'm going to just cheat and add we're gonna set the name to entity, I think is what we will do. Or let's set the entity to the recipe. Yeah, okay, let's do the recipe first and then we'll set the ingredient. Let's do that. Okay, so let's. Oh, this is going to be a crazy query. We might need to iterate this. Let's see what happens.
Okay, so what we're saying is that E is the E is is the ingredient that is, you know, after all DG putting the links together, and we're going to create a new relationship between the recipe and the new ingredient. So this should be extraordinarily fun. So let's, let's see what happens on grab a copy of this just in case. We may uh, I think it should be fine because we're just doing creates. It's actually be quite fast. Okay, so what's really interesting about this now is that we have now got enough stuff to be able to, if we wanted to rerun um, sort of Levain community detection or the uh, weekly connected components, now against our deduplicated ingredients, we could because we don't really care what entity, what information entity has. What we care about is that entity has been linked to. In Oh, excuse me, two ingredients. So what might actually be a fun thing to have a look at now is if we look at the ratio between um, how many... Actually, no, we should... We'll know this. What do we want to do? What, what do we want to ask? What is now the most common and commonly linked ingredient? Okay, yeah, that, that, that will work. Let's do that, because what I th what will be interesting now is previously, I think olive oil was the most popular ingredient, but we saw there was like something like 16 flowers that have been grouped together. So what is the most, co like most uh, highly populated entity? So let let's do that. that, that's going to be fun. So let's do this, let's do E, oops. Um. Oh, sorry, it has oh, not being very consistent. Has new ingredient. Our recipe with E R. Actually, So let's let's see what are our most popular ingredients are now. So well this is exciting. So let's let's bring back some of the ingredients and let's get the ingredients what way around did we say members This may go well or not so well. I see what happens. Oh, 
Oh, I've got to give it a name. Okay, that was quicker than expected. Ooh. Let's just do something about that. So that is interesting and I think we slightly expected that. So previously how olive oil, and admittedly the thing with olive oil is that we're not necessarily going to be grouping together all of the oils because if this was going to be fair then we should be grouping olive oil, rapeseed oil, vegetable oil, um, I'm sure there's many other oils I've missed out. Those would be grouped together. But the really interesting thing here is now uh, it's flour that's like the, the most used ingredient in the recipes, followed by uh, various types of chilli powder. So the, the interesting one is the chipotle paste and chipotle chilli paste uh, to see why those have been grouped together. But that's OK, we can have a look at that. Then all the stock have been grouped together. The sugars have... So this is really interesting, how these things have been pulled together. So... Wow, okay, that, that's that's really interesting. That is really interesting. So I'm really tempted now to have another go at seeing what happens if we try to do a, a community detection now on these items and, oh, why not? Let's see what happens. We'll, we'll have a quick go now. If it takes a long time to um, do the graph projection, then we'll just leave it there or maybe it'll be really quick. So. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to quickly, um, just quickly going to look at the docs to get the. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to steal this and then just rewrite it accordingly. No need to reinvent the wheel. So let's do. We're going to do match e. Entity return ID. Oops, don't do that. E, and then what we're interested in Ah yes, so So this is when we're putting ingredients as a community. What we're trying to do now, we're trying to do recipes as a community. Okay, so now we don't want entity, we want recipe. And then what we want to say is we want to say that E, oh no, recipe. So let's do R1 recipe. get rid of all of this so it's not confusing. Has new ingredient the entity has new ingredient R2 And then we want to return the IDs of R1 and R2. And okay, and if this loads reasonably quickly, then I'll be very keen to see what happens next. Oh, okay. Oh, ooh, okay. Ah, no relationships. 
that's slightly concerning. So let's see what's gone wrong here. I'm just going to quickly grab this to see whether this works correctly. Oh, I can't spell today. Uh, let's return source limit three. Let's bring something back. Oh, I've got the, the I can see what I've got the the relationship directions the wrong way around so it's going to return nothing okay that's fine so let's drop this graph and put uh, this projection and put a new one back in again just gonna turn browser back off and on again because it's being a little bit sluggish so let's just start again And let's just go back to our query and just change the direction. So it needs to be this way. And if it's quick, happy days. If not, then we can see what the outcome was later. Oh, okay. No, we've got to drop that. So. Lovely, and let's run this again. I'm going to give it two minutes. If we've not loaded projection within two minutes, then I think we'll just pause it there and uh, see, 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 um, talk about what happens after. So I'm going to have a little think about how to deal with the um. The, the group of nodes and just picking one to assign the name, but that's fine. Uh, what, what's good here is because we're looking at the graph structures, it doesn't matter so much if uh, we don't have the ingredient names, because what we care about is being able to link them to the entities, and those entity nodes effectively represent that all of those ingredients that sit under them are the same ingredient based on our various rules. Oh, excellent. So it's in. That was good. Yeah, 42 seconds. Very nice. And again, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm always going happy to reuse stuff I've already done. So let's use that and just going to change the names uh, accordingly. I'm going to create a new entity. Let's call this recipe entity. And E contains member I. So uh, that's going to be our recipes okay this is really exciting this should be pretty quick actually i should have called it a different relationship type but uh, too late now too late now to take it back let's give that a couple of minutes see what happens Give it, give it a couple of minutes. If it doesn't, then we'll stop it there. But I'll, I'll let you know what the outcome was.
Well, it looks like this is going to take a bit longer than expected. So I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the stream here. So thank you for joining me. And I will let you know what the outcome of this is. So it's very exciting. So I'm going to let this um, plug on in the background and I'll let you know what happens. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.